Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good whatever time of the day it is in your particular part of the world. And I'm back today with a reading just in time for the solstice. So, happy longest day, happy shortest day, happy midsummer, happy midwinter, wherever you are in the world and however you plan to celebrate or not to celebrate. Just a really quick introduction. We are now at the halfway point of the year, six months in. We've got six months to look back and reflect on. We've got the six months that are coming in the future. So quick read, really what's just coming up for you in the next sort of six weeks that will take us to the next point in the pagan calendar. So Luhansa or Imbolc, depending on where you are in the world. Okay. I've tried to represent both hemispheres in the images here. Um, no other real significance to the cards. Simply draw the image that you're drawn to, or if you're in a particular hemisphere and you're resonating with some of some of the, the symbols on the card because of the time of the year where you are, it really doesn't matter. Um, I've just drawn a quick couple of cards at random to have a look at what's coming in for you over the next six weeks or so. Quick reminder before I start to read, I am, I have opened my free reader giveaway again. Once I reach 500 subscribers, I will choose one of those subscribers. All you have to do to be in with the chance of winning a reading with me is to make sure you're subscribed and drop a heart or a comment in the comment box. Likes and shares are always very welcome. Okay, let's go. I have on the table a depiction of Letha, um, so Midsummer Night's Eve. Very sultry, very come hither. Pile number one. The sun is representing your pile. Pile number two, you have the Druid. Pile number three, you have the Queen of Wands. And pile number four, you have Rebirth. So choose your pile and I shall meet you at your reading. Hello, pile number one. If you chose the sun, then this is your pile. <laughs> okay. So the sun, I chose this because we are midsummer. It's midsummer night's eve, so I chose the sun. It's in its zenith. It's shining brightly down, the bumblebee, the lizards. So, all of the abundant, fertile energy of the sun. It's a time of renewed confidence, um, new zest for life. Just feeling very good about yourself. And that is borne out by your second card, Adventure and the Knight of Wands. I really like the way that we're following this fiery imagery. Um, the knight is dressed in the fiery colours of yellow and red or gold and red. He's holding aloft a torch. He looks to be travelling at night, although it's a summer's night and it's not really very dark someone who's ready to set off on an adventure. Um, it's definitely summer in the landscape. The valley, the hills are all green and verdant. You've got all of this heather around and lots of bracken. So there really is a sense, pile number one, of you feeling light, bright, happy, confident, 
there's a lot to look forward to in the future and you're feeling really positive about it. You might also be feeling very positive about yourself and your your own image and how you're showing up on the in the world because you do have the queen of emotions and you have the siren. The only card I'm going to point out here as a little warning is the four of pentacles. It's sometimes called the miser's card and I think you can probably see why. We've got a figure. Um, he is sitting on the biggest house in town. His crown almost looks like the battlements of a castle. He has his feet very firmly planted on two pentacles beneath him. And he is clutching to the middle of his chest, his third pentacle. What he's not seeing is the fourth pentacle above him, balanced on his head. Sort of pennies from heaven. You can afford this season to loosen the reins on the finances a little bit. You have some savings. If you don't release your hands and put this pentacle down somewhere, you can't receive this one that's here or any more that come in. So I'm not suggesting for one second that you are foolhardy or irresp fiscally irresponsible with your money, but possibly Along with new, newfound confidence, this adventurous spirit, this striking forth, this is the only discordant note in here. You can afford to relax and live a little. I really like this card here, the Queen of Emotions. She's looking very glamorous. She's looking very mysterious. She's also very adorned and she's confident swimming in the depth of her emotions. The Queen of Cups is happiest in her feels. And given the fact that you have the siren next, I'm seeing you could possibly have some kind of a little love interest, even if it's only a, a crush or a flirtation coming up for you. Um, this sense of adventure could very much be a sense of an amorous adventure. In any case, there's something of a, in the sun energy, you feeling healthier, um, more open. If you are in the northern hemisphere, we are approaching midsummer. Certainly in the UK, weather started to warm up. It started to get nicer, sunbathing weather. That sun-kissed kind of radiance that makes you feel good. So possibly some new summer clothes, <laughs> some a new look for summer. But you're striding forth, <laughs> striding forth just with a new sense of confidence and optimism. And I actually think a little sort of flick of your mermaid's tail, you've got the siren, you know, the siren sang their song to lure the sailors onto the rocks. They were driven mad by the sound of these beautiful voices and would do anything to get to, uh, to answer the siren's call. So really I'm seeing Possibly um, a six week period up until the beginning of August of feeling better, feeling lighter, brighter, happier, more confident, more sunny, more prepared to wear your heart on your sleeve and embrace your feelings and float into the depths with them. This doesn't have to be meeting anybody serious or serious relationship but you're certainly going to turn a few heads, I think, as you walk into the room with your very sort of watery, 
air of mystery about you, coupled with your sense of adventure. Fire and water is a compelling mixture. The sun is a Leo energy. Wands represent the fire suits. The queen of emotions representing the water suits, nicely balanced by the siren, um, a water mythological creature. Don't hold on too tight to money or material things. Live a little pile on. Enjoy the light and the warmth of the sun. Brightest solstice blessings to you, pile one. Nice quick reads this evening. Hello, pile two. If you chose the Druid, then this is your reading. Okay, nice. The Druid is the Hierophant in the traditional deck. I chose this card for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere who are having your shortest day tomorrow. The Druid is stood in front of Stonehenge. It's the shortest day. The sun's rising, he's conducting rituals, has a stone altar carved with spirals. He has all of the tools, very much like a magician, actually. There's um, all four ele elements there. You've got the water, the air, the earth, and the fire. Additionally, he has a robin. So uh, well associated with winter, we have a red gem in the hilt of the stone around We've got the oak and I think there's a little wren perched up here. He's wearing a, a holly wreath. He's wearing robes of white. So I chose this to represent somebody conducting a, a, a rite um, for midwinter, a Yule rite. Not so much associated to the Hierophant, but there is an element of, of a magician, um, of a pope or of a priest here. So if you were drawn to this card, you may very well be a Druid or be a Pagan. Okay. Next, you have the Three of Wands, Fire Signs and Foundation. You have three fertile, abundant wands covered in strawberries. So strawberries, now we've just had the strawberry moon, the strawberry full moon. Three of Wands is a card of action. You've taken stock, you've looked out at the world, you've decided that you are about to set off. You've looked out, you've seen the ships in the harbour, you've decided where you're going to go and you're about to set off on your way. And the time is right, the time is ripe. Yeah, the time is, is very much now. Three of Cups, one of my favourite cards in the tarot. Uh, it's a time of celebration. Gatherings, getting together, uh, family, friends, good times. Three women here, all celebrating together. Around them, we have lots and lots of abundance, lots of fruits. They all have rather large goblets raised in the air and they're toasting them. 
So despite you choosing um, a very wintry card, um, the images are, are very sunny, very current. We've got fruits on here, time of celebration, party and get togethers, family, friends, <laughs> Girls' nights out. Males, imagine three men. But it's a time of unity. You've got the four of materials or the four of pentacles. This came up from a different suit in pile one. But because of the suit, I'm getting a slightly different message here. So often called uh, the card of the misers, the four of pentacles. Um, this woman has four beautiful roses. Um, she does have this hand free, but she's, she's holding them too tightly. And she's got this huge, beautiful one here above her. The message with this, I'm seeing more connected to and with the vessel, yeah. You can loosen up a little. <laughs> she is very closed off in her body language. It's not just about holding on to your material resources here. The way she's looking down, the expression on her face. She needs to perhaps loosen up a little, unbut unbutton her blouse, be a little bit more open to things other than working hard all of the time. Spend a little, okay, yeah. Spend a little bit of that hard earned money, pile number two, on, on your appearance, on glamour, on feeling good about yourself. Because the next card you have is the vessel. And there are ob obvious connotations of fertility and pregnancy. We can see a woman standing in this yellow, creative, solar plexus chakra coloured bowl. We can see her trunk. She's covering her modesty. Got that sun energy shining out of the darkness. You could be pregnant, you could be trying to get pregnant, that could be the celebration on here. There could be some kind of christening or a wedding. But you are a vessel, your body is the vessel. Perhaps, pile number two, it's time to pamper and nurture and, and love that body and, and see it as a vessel and to treat it with some love. You look absolutely great here. But perhaps there is, there is a message in this card and you've got the two threes, which is a foundation number, you've got that pyramid, that triangle, it's a very stable number. And you've got the pyramid here. Then you build to a four. With this vessel, I really am seeing it's time to treat your body well and see it as something other than functional and nurture it and pamper it. You, in this deck, You've got these beautiful roses. Take a little bit of time off work, it's okay. Smell the roses, go out, enjoy some of these beautiful pentacles and treat and pamper yourself. There could also be something to do with the chalice and the, the, the holy vessel here. It could be a time, yeah, if you are 
very spiritual if you meditate an awful lot. I think the message here might be get out in nature, enjoy life, don't be so concerned with being in the, in the spiritual, in the esoteric all of the time. Okay, another quite short message this evening. Pile number two, that was your solstice reading. Brightest blessings. Hello, pile number three. If you chose this card, this sun, this rebirth card, this is your reading. I've got a feeling I may have pulled the cards out in a different order than when I put them on the table. Well, I'll make it clear in the timestamps which pile is which. I'll give it the card name. Okay. I chose this card, Rebirth, because it depicts the son, the child son of Keridwen being reborn. It's the day after the shortest day and the sun's rising. We've reached that turning point in the year in the southern hemisphere where the days are gradually starting to go, going to start to get lighter again. So the sun has been reborn. So there is a sense of rebirth and there really is a sense of rebirth because you've got the green man or the fool coming up next. You've got Holly and Ivy on your card. The sun is rising over pebbles and boulders and a stream. I think the stream is important, it's, things are going to start to get moving again. Rebirth is judgment in the traditional tarot. So you are very nearly at the end of a cycle. And it could have been really quite heavy for you, pile number three. You could have felt that you've been in a metaphorical winter of your life for a long time. But there's a sense here more than a sense actually that you've turned a corner and life is going to feel a lot lighter and brighter yeah i think you've done a lot of karmic work and there really is a sense of rebirth renewal okay you've got the fool who shows up as the green man here so setting off on a journey, feeling fertile, feeling abundant, feeling fresh. There are pine cones on here. You've got berries on here. It's time for you to go on a, on a journey. There are 22 cards in, in tarot. Here's zero. Following rebirth, you've got the world. So this, you are at the end of a heavy cycle. You're feeling a lot lighter, a lot more positive about life and ready to embrace it again. I think life is quite sweet for you and is going to become quite sweet for you. I'm sort of looking at a period of about six weeks. You've got the Queen of Pentacles. So you are abundant. Despite the fact that Pentacles is a winter suit, the green man is showing up quite autumnal and the queen of Pentacles, yellow and red, quite summer colours. She's showing her abundance. There's a rabbit sign of abundance and fertility here. She is sitting on her throne surrounded by roses out in nature everything's fertile everything's blooming this is a woman who is very secure very savvy um, can earn her own living 
and manages and balances things very well. She's very stable and she's very grounded. So you're ready for an adventure and you are showing up as possibly having the queen to be able to pay for that adventure, to be able to sustain it. If it's not financial, you are feeling, feeling abundant and fertile. You are surrounded by love, by, by other resources. And that's really borne out here with this card, the three of materials. So again, it's pentacles, the three of pentacles. Shows three people working in harmony. I really like this depiction. Three is a very stable number. And you can see that these three women, by working together, have managed to build this fabulous tower kind of pyramid. And you can see they're in harmony. One we can see is dressed in the yellow and she's got the orange rose. The one in the middle is depicted and you can see actually, yeah, she's got red on and the red rose. And then the third one with the pink rose. And together by working in harmony, they are able to build and create this incredibly beautiful tower. So a time of working harmoniously with others. It doesn't have to be um, work, work. But if it is, it might very well be a card of collaboration. In the traditional tarot, we have what appears to be an architect, a stonemason, uh, discussing his designs with two other well-dressed people and there's a suggestion they might be the financiers or they might be the people um, responsible for commissioning work. It might be the time to reach out and collaborate more with other people in your life. It's a lovely card. That's two pentacles in abundance. Um, an atmosphere of new beginnings. I do think this is financial. I do think this actually might be a business. So if you're self-employed, now might be the time to consider. You're sitting pretty on your throne. You have some money. Now might be the time to extend your reach or collaborate or bring possibly some investors or if you have a, some kind of a, a social media platform, extend your reach because your final card is the vision. Absolutely beautiful card. We've got two hours of wisdom here. I've talked about possibly you've been through quite a heavy time. You might have had to work really hard and hold the vision can you see the hands say hold the dream? And there's the flame of it that kept you going in the darkness. You've been on a long journey because you have the mountain here. But above, you're coming into all these rainbow colours. And you've got them on the outside. And I've never noticed before, but they almost seem to make a lucky horseshoe. And you've got a lucky penny and medallion down here. So, pile number three really is a time of rebirth, renewed optimism, renewed, renewed, uh, naivety, enthusiasm, youthfulness about the future and possibly about how you earn your money, real new ideas. I said naivety because the fool's journey is called a fool he sets out, is at the beginning. Maybe a youthfulness, a zest, somebody who's prepared to take a risk and take a chance rather than naivety. Really positive time. Hold the vision because you are very, very close to the vision becoming a reality. Pile number three. That was your read. 
these are coming out so quickly this evening that's fantastic if you enjoyed that read pile number three don't forget to give me a like a share leave a comment and if you're not already please consider subscribing hello pile number four i really hope i've done these in the order that i set them out on the table i can't remember when i put them off camera but in the timestamps i shall make sure that i write pile one queen of what etc whatever so that you know that you may have chosen pile three in the beginning but i'm actually reading pile four but i'll make it really clear in the timestamps. okay if you chose the queen of wands then this is your reading Okay, yeah, these are coming out fast. All right, this might be my uh, very spiritual, very psychic -y pile. I chose the Queen of Wands because in this deck, um, she is burning her fire on Midsummer Night's Eve. She has the fox with her showing that she is prepared to fight like a vixen for what is hers. She has lit this fire like a beacon, as they would back in the days of yore, being lit to welcome the sun rising on Midsummer's Day. And we can see the sun rising there. And there's something very magical about the flames going up. So you are fiery, you are passionate, you are enthusiastic. The word is illumination. So I think you are feeling illuminated. Um, you may, with the high priest and the hierophant and the fact that you're standing on the threshold, uh, be feeling a sense of elevation, a sense of clarity. The high priest is the magician. He's a learned magician in this deck. And I actually wondered about using the high priest because this is midsummer and the sun in the zenith. And you've got the you've got the yellow on there. I did wonder about using him as one of the the cards to choose from but as I'd already got a male card on the table was the male card I've forgotten now rebirth oh yeah the druid yeah I decided against it and I went for a female image but actually he wanted to come out and be in this pile because this is the pile that he would have represented had I chosen him. So he clearly wanted to be here. So you are illuminated, you are standing strong. Perhaps you are recognising your spiritual power and your spiritual strength because you have the magician. I'm seeing this as um, somebody in this, people in this pile, um, you're someone quite mature, you're somebody quite learned. So you might already be quite far along your journey because then you move from the one to the five and you have the, the Hierophant. Um, like I say, he, this magician, it's not flashy, it's not full of tricks. He's out in nature, he's wearing his yellow robes, creativity, solar, high summer. We've got the sun, full sun depicted up here above him. He's not got all of the traditional tools. He's just got his book. On the front of his book, he has his pentagram. So next six weeks, a big period in terms of illumination, in terms of your spirituality. 
you've got the Hierophant, most traditional image of the Hierophant in any of the cards that I have. Here he is the Pope, the High Priest, and he's called the High Priest here. I know I have a fair few male watchers and they would resonate yeah resonate with being pagan um clearly it's quite a see it's got quite a young face but he's quite serious uh he's holding his hand up to be listened to as he's going to dispense his wisdom sitting between the pillars elevated he's got the keys of saint peter here he's got his staff of office he's got his robes on and we have two figures here who are prepared um, to listen to the justice that's going to be dispensed. Okay. Your next card is the Six of Materials or the Six of Pentacles. That's about balance and it's about abundance and, and bounty. I think you are in a position of authority, as somebody of high standing, somebody people trust to make a judgment, a leader. And I think you are being called, you're being reminded to be fair and balanced. You've got Six of Materials or the Six of Pentacles. Here's all the abundance coming down. Look at these two figures. They've created it together. They're mirroring each other. They're twins. They are both happy. They're surrounded by all of this abundance that they've received, but somehow they've magic it together. The Queen of Wands, the High Priest, the Hierophant, they're all solitary cards and they're all big, powerful leaders. With privilege comes responsibility. Make sure you judge fairly. Possibly come down off your elevated position a little bit and collaborate with others. But if you are in a solo position of responsibility, spiritual responsibility, if you are responsible for any kind of an organisation, family, you see yourself as the head of a family, a leader in a situation, lead with wisdom and with fairness. It's going to be a very illuminating time for you, pile number four. Look, you're on the threshold of something big. You started with all this fire energy and you're finishing here with all this fire energy. You've got a pair of feet standing from the dark about to take the step, almost looks like the jump, the plunge here, the threshold, you're on the threshold of something very, very big. An illumination, a moment of clarity, a real breakthrough. Something that's gonna elevate you from the queen to the magician, spiritual leader, to the Hierophant, a spiritual leader. I want to say have fun as well as you're manifesting, because the High Priest and the Magician can manifest. And all of this abundance, it is a time of abundance and fertility. I drew this card, not from this deck, but I drew this card this morning as my card of the day. It's a number six, we're in the sixth month, the midway point. Maybe it is time 
to have a little break and not push so hard. But you're on the threshold. Whatever happens in the next sort of six weeks, and I'm even going to push it out and say, say the next six months for you, pile number four, and I haven't done that for the others. You're really on the threshold of moving up, moving up quite quickly um, in status. So don't forget to A, enjoy all of these blessings that you're bringing in, but share them and share them out and deal with people fairly. Pile number three, four, that has been your solstice reading. Brightest blessings to you. I hope you enjoyed this and you'll consider giving me a like, a share, leave me a comment. And if you're not already, I hope you consider subscribing. Brightest blessings, pile number four.